everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This um, is another project for my Easter series 2018 and I'm going to be showing you how to make these Easter cards which are partially die cut. So the idea is, is that you die cut all of these letters but you leave a tiny bit of it still attached to the card so that you get this effect. So it's partially die cut. So um, I'm going to be showing how to make this one but I'm gonna also show and talk you through this style as well because the dies that I'm using are stamping up, um, the letter dies, and um, I just wanted to make sure that people that don't have those dies but have other letter dies can still create this style card. So, to make um, this one here, I've used these one inch um, dies, okay? So, um, when I talk you through this one, to get this effect, you can do exactly the same, but with one inch dies, two inch, three inch, whatever letter dies it is you've got, you can use any, but that's what I use for these ones here. So that's these here. And I'll share any links as well that I've got. And basically you can see when it opens up, that's where it's cut on the back. Okay, and then it just lifts it up and it's attached to the top of the card. So I'm still gonna decorate this one a bit more, but I just thought I'd bring that in just to show you what I've been doing. Okay, so the one we're going to be doing today is this one here. The papers that I used for this one um, are the free um, printable downloads from Trimcraft. It's their um, Easter um, papers that they've done. I'll just bring it up there. You get the little bunny. I've just added some glitter on there as well. And Hoppy Easter. I've got a nice little play on words there as well. And again, this one stands up. The difference with this one is I've, I've put a um, card on the back here. And I'm also going to put another piece inside here because obviously you want to be able to write your sentiment because that's obviously where it was all die cut. It just doesn't look so good. So that's what I've done to cover that up. But I'm going to go through all that now. Okay, so you are going to need a piece of main card here, which is three and one eighth of an inch by eight and a quarter. So it's the, the standard width of A4 card. Um, and then it's just cut down to um, six and, did I just say three and one eighth? It should be six and one eighth of an inch. Actually, let me just bring my scoreboard up just so I know I'm getting them right. Yeah, six and one eighth of an inch by eight and a quarter, okay? Then you will also need two more pieces which are eight and a quarter by three and you want two pieces. And these are gonna be the bits that will stick inside just to make it look more appealing to the eye. And then for decorating, I've already gone ahead and done most of it here, but this matted piece here, you'll recognize this paper if you watched my live, Facebook Live um, a couple of weeks ago. And I done, um, I used these downloadable papers from, oh gosh, um, I can't remember the magazine. I'll put a little link up now, um, but I printed them all off. And this is eight by two and three quarters. And you can see what I've done here. So I've put this mesh kind of ribbon along the back first, then I've put this brown craft card over the top, and then I've put the word Easter there as well. And then I'm gonna get some of these same rabbits which I fussy cut, and I'm gonna put a couple of them along the bottom here as well. Okay, so that's the decoration for this card. So what you wanna do first of all is, yeah, you don't need the scoreboard at the minute, is just grab a ruler and a pencil, and along, the side here, you just want to mark it three inches in. Now bear in mind it's six and one eighth of an inch. You want to mark it three inches and it, it will all make sense as to why we've got that one eighth of an inch um, extra piece here when we get to it. But just mark it three inches at the top and at the bottom. We'll come up a little bit there. Okay. And then just draw a pin, pin, pencil, <laughs> draw a pencil joining up those two dots like so. Okay, then you'll notice here I've wrote the word cut on one side and I've just put a cross on the other. Again, just do that so it makes sense when I'm talking to you through the tutorial of what bits we are see, doing what bit with. Okay, first of all, you wanna grab your, um, your die, so whatever ones you're doing. So I'm gonna spell out the word hoppy again along here. So I just need to make sure, so H-O, P, obviously there's only one P, and then the Y. Okay. Now, the side where I've wrote cut, okay, that is the side that we want to put the dies on. Okay, so, and that should be the three inch side. And the three and one eighth of an inch side will be this one here, okay? So then you want to line up your 
word basically. So in my case it's hoppy. This would be good though, obviously if you've got happy, because you'll have happy Easter, happy birthday, happy Christmas, um, any kind of um, you know holiday, um, the word happy fits really comfortably along this width. If you've got smaller, again, you could, even if you've got smaller than one inch, you could probably have happy birthday running all the way along the top. This is a five by seven card, but again, if you're doing the card this size and the shape that I've got, you could easily have happy birthday running right the way along the top. So it's just a really nice fun um, card to do. So just making sure the letters are all the right way up. Now what you want to do, this is the crucial part. This pencil line, you want to have a little bit of it showing through the top of each of your stamps, um, each of your dies when you lie them down. So I'm gonna lie it down, just put a bit of washi tape on and then I'm gonna bring it up closer so you can see. So just taking off some of that sticky from this particular washi because it's quite strong. I'm just gonna pop that in place another piece there as well and if I just bring this one up you can see that the pencil mark is just inside that I can see it you need to be able to see it you want this to have the very bottom part of whatever letter or whatever it is you're die cutting needs to be this side of this pencil line it's the most important part of this process and my mum when I was showing her this we had such a giggle and in the end after her third attempt, she almost threw the cards across the craft room because it just, you have to get this right. So this is something that does take a lot of concentration. Um, it is a little bit, not really, fiddly maybe the word, I'm not sure. It's just, you have to make sure that that piece of the bottom part of whatever die is, is slightly over this side of this pencil mark, okay? So that is my H. Then I'm gonna go along and put my next letter in place. Again, you can kind of now, if they're all the same height, you can make sure they all line up with each other at the top here and then you'll know that you get a bit over, but always just make sure you can see a little bit of pencil. So again, I'm confident that that one's in the right place. And then again, my P, it's about, it's, a, it's literally maybe like two millimeters over that pencil mark. So put my P and then because I've only got one P, which you will, you will do anyway, most of your die sets, I'm just gonna put a pencil mark there, just around that side. I'm gonna put the Y in place. And I'll show you then, just to make sure that it's all gonna line up. So I've got a feeling I'm gonna move that P a little bit over to the left a bit more. Pop my Y, again, making sure little bit of it's there. Then take this one back off. And you wanna put it the other side of that pencil mark and I can see it's too close to that Y. So I'm actually gonna bring it further towards the O, about there. Redo my pencil mark. Again, very pushing down very lightly so it's all easy to rub out. And then I can move the P and that is now a much better spacing between my letters. So I'll pop the P back, get that one cut like so, and then I can go back and put it in place in a minute. Okay, let me just bring this all up a bit. So you can see the bottom of every one of these letters is just below that pencil mark, and the rest of it is all on this piece. Basically what's gonna happen now is when we put this through the machine, you've gotta place it in a particular way with the plates in a particular position. But you're, when you run it through the die machine, it will die cut all of everything that's on this side of this pencil mark and this little bit that's overhanging on this side will not cut and that's what keeps it attached to the card and that's why it's called partially die cutting. So this is the bit now where my mum, <laughs> she, I kept saying to her, you're not listening to me and we were having a right old laugh because she'd done it and then she just went, oh damn it, you know, and, and I was going, see, you haven't done it. So everything you want cutting goes between the plates anything you don't want cutting sticks out at the end of the plates. Now the other reason why I've done this and it works so well is that this is using a A4 cutting machine. I have the tattered lace A4 cutting machine and my mum has the A4 spellbinders cutting machine. Again this one here will go through the smaller cutting machines like the Big Shot which is commonly used. So again I've tried to do it so that even if you don't have this size die cutting machine you can still create this lovely partially die cut card. Okay, bottom plate, 
and you've got the piece here and this is what we want cut you're going to bring it right up to the edge of the plate and you need to line up that pencil mark with the top of the plate meaning that that little two mil will hang out at the top so if I just lie that down like so put my plate over the top and then what I'm going to do is bring the plates up put the plates down so they're completely flush and then I can line up the pencil mark from corner to corner and I can see the top of those letters poking out from the top. So if I just now bring that, you can see there those letters all poking out of the bottom. So now I know when I run that through the machine, all that's going to cut is everything sandwiched between these plates. This tiny little bit that's not will not cut. Okay, so bring in my mum's big one and pop it in and then keeping making sure this does not move I'm pinching it so tightly between with my other hand it's nice and squeaky and again before you even get to it just rearrange make sure you're happy so now I'm going to remove carefully my letters and take that one off take that one and the P, which I need to put down again, and the Y. And now you can see that they are still connected because they haven't cut past that pencil line. So again, I'm just going to pop the P okay, down Okay, so let's just get rid of all of this. Take off that final one. And now just going to rub out this is going to be covered anyway, so I'm not too worried. Okay, now we can just pop out all these other little pieces. Now you'll see with this H, I've got this bit here because it's still attached and I need to remove that piece there. So all you want to do is grab a metal ruler and your cutting knife. Oh gosh, that was uh, not very good. Let's come on down. Let me just pop that one back in. Okay. So just sit that right over, line it up with the pencil mark, the ruler with the pencil mark, and then just cut that tiny little piece you just want to remove. Like so. Okay. Then we can rub out again all of this. Okay, now what we're going to do is create a score line because obviously we haven't um, burnished this yet. And you know I've done it so it was cut. Um, this side will be three and one eighth of an inch. It's because now you're going to score right at the bottom of the cut piece. So you're going to start scoring along here, which is slightly further down than where the original pencil mark was. So where, roughly where you will score now will be the exact centre point. And it just means now that when we fold it in half, you'll have a nice equal sided card. So basically you want to be scoring along the bottom part of every letter where the, the, cut, the piece that's cut finishes. So like so. I'll just bring that up now. Can see where I've just scored that line. See, it goes along the bottom of every single cut letter, which is just below where the pencil mark was. Probably should have left the pencil mark there first and then scored it so you could see. But the pencil mark originally was slightly above that. Okay, and now what you can do is just very carefully fold that all down. Then on this side, just go along and burnish very carefully all the top pieces there of that card. Do not burnish the actual letter. Again, my mum, she said, oh, I don't mind if you say all this in your video, but she then went and burnished the letter and then that meant the letter folded over and it kind of then, you know, you, you lose the look of the card because now those letters are really firm and rigid and they're not gonna fold and bend over. Do not bend the letters, just burnish and fold this piece in between. But there you have already a really nice card. So the effect and the result is brilliant. It's just that little, you know, you've really got to <laughs> really concentrate with this one um, to get, you know, the perfect result. 
So now it's just all down to the fun stuff of cutting it all, um, sorry, decorating it all. So these are the two pieces which were three by um, eight and a quarter. And basically I'm gonna stick one underneath here and one over the top. And it just gives your card visually, it just makes it a lot more um, cleaner. Um, and so forth. So I'm going to get that all stuck okay, down. So I just turned it upside down, fold this piece back over like so and just put glue around the letters. So all the parts you can see there. Don't put the glue on the letter <laughs> otherwise you'll end up sticking it down. So it's everywhere in between. Really concentrate around the edges because obviously that's what really okay. matters. And then pop this piece over down here on this side and then bring this down on top of it okay like so and then bring it back up again and you can just make sure but that measurement will give you the exact piece like so and then on this side now you can put glue over okay. all of it and that last piece will go nicely over the top now like I said with the bigger one the only reason I've done it on this is because it's obviously a shorter card and those letters, it, the back of it did really stand out. But with something like this where the letters are smaller and it's such a large background, you can still easily write your sentiment there. But if you do want to cover it, just do exactly the same as I did and just measure this exact piece of whatever size card it is. But like I said, that was a five by seven for that one. And I think that still looks so nice. It just gives it a completely different overall you know, look. Okay, so flip that over, let that all set, and then I just need to decorate it. So that piece was already cut down, which is going to go oh, up the right way. Don't know if I gave you the measurements for this, so I will just tell you again. It is two and three quarters by um, seven and seven eighths of an inch. I've already put my tape on there. And again, when this goes on, it will give you a nice border all the way around. Again, I absolutely love these free papers. I think they look so good. Like so. And then I'm just gonna pop a few little bunnies on the top. Okay, I've gone a little bit different there actually, and I've just put a couple, because I love this paper so much. So I've put one just stuck on the top of the T there, and I've got this one kind of coming down from the O. Some little hopping bunnies. So there you have it, and then open it up. You've obviously got that nice inside to write your sentiment. I'm gonna put a little happy Easter stamp there. And from the back there, it looks obviously much nicer as well. On the envelope so page board, it. this is a eight and a quarter by five card. So you have here um, eight and a half by five, which would be the closest measurement. So you'll need a piece of paper that's 10 and three quarters squared. And you're gonna cut your first line at four and one eighth of an inch. You could also do, if you're worried, you know, if, if you're maybe not, I don't know, some people, their results on this can be, you know, they're not, they're not always too sure. You could also do five and a half by eight and a half, which is a piece of 11 by 11, and the first score line is at four and a half. Okay, so there's two envelopes you could do on this, which would work for this one as well. But there you have it. So that is using, obviously, those stamping up um, letters. Love them, think they're so good. But equally as nice is this one here as well, which is that little bit smaller. Um, but I've got lots of room, I'm gonna do something nice still there as well, which you'll see in the pictures. So there you have it. So I hope you like the Easter card from me today, the partially die cut. Just type that into YouTube and you'll see lots of um, you know, other partial die cut cards using butterflies and just any die that you have. You can use it in the same way. So hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. Um, hope you're enjoying the series. And uh, yeah, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.